To implement a timer object, first add the message ID on WM Timer to the message map tags for your C dialog class. Second, override the method on timer within your C dialog class. Third, call the method set timer to start and set the timer. Example, set timer 1 1000. Four, call kill timer when done. Example, kill timer 1. In this example, we're adding the message ID on WM Timer to our message map tags for our C dialog. Next, we need to override the onTimer message handler function. In this example, we have a global integer called days. And then inside of the implementation or function definition of the message handler on timer, we're going to postfix increment days. Then we're going to convert it with i to a, and we're going to display it in a C static text control. Next, we need to call the set timer method. The first argument is the timer that we want to start. The second argument is the number of milliseconds we want the timer to oscillate at. And the third argument specifies whether or not we want to use C Windows callback routine. Finally, when we're done with the timer object, we want to call the method kill timer and pass in the timer ID that we want to stop. In this example, in the message map tags for my C dialog object, I've added the message ID on WM timer. The second thing I needed to do then was to override on timer. So I did that here. And in this case, we're just going to increment days and decrement the life of a pet class object that we built. And then we're going to display the results in a C static control. And if life is less than or equal to zero, we're going to stop the timer and display game over. Your pet has died of starvation. Next, inside the go method, the third thing we want to do is call the method set timer. And in this case, uh, the ID is one, and we're going to have it tick every second, 1,000 milliseconds is one second. And this is specifying whether or not we want to use the C window routine. And finally, again, when we're done, I'm just stopping the timer with the method kill timer. So four step process, one, two, three, four. Um, again, we'll review that. Step one, you want to add the timer message ID. Step two, you're going to want to override the on timer message handler function. Step three, from somewhere in your program, you're going to want to call the method set timer, pass in the timer's ID, the number of milliseconds you want it to oscillate at, and whether or not to use the C window callback routine. And then finally, four, when you're done with the timer, kill it or stop the timer. So let's see how that works. And in this case, I'll click start and Sparky and go. In this case, you can see elapsed time is ticking every 1,000 milliseconds or every second. Okay. And let's say that that's too much. If I wanted to, I could lengthen the time. Let's say instead of every second, I'm going to do every 8 seconds. How about that? So 8,000 milliseconds would give us 8 seconds. You build the project. <clears throat> Start it. In this case, it's counting every eight seconds. Now let's take a look at using XSleep to provide a sleep method for MFC projects. While the sleep method may be adequate for console applications, it is not a good choice for MFC applications. Running the console sleep method within an MFC application will also lock up the interface until it completes its task. To allow users to continue to interact with your interface while you pause certain processes, utilize the multi-threaded xsleep method instead. It will allow users to access the interface even when certain processes are sleeping. One of the things you'll want to do in your MFC projects from time to time is uh, you know, sleep or pause. And there's a sleep method that works effectively in console applications. But when you get into the MFC, if you call sleep, because it's a, you know, sort of a console method, it'll end up freezing or locking up your interface. And that's not what you want to happen. In other words, while I'm pausing, I still want to allow the player to be able to do things like switch weapons or click different things on my form. Um, so because of that, uh, you'll need an additional method and you need to get into some threading. So I just grabbed this off of um, MSDN's website and this is a method called XSleep. You can copy and paste the code off their website. I've also pasted it on networking programming. So just copy and paste it into a header file and include it in your project. 
and it's just a sleep method that will run in a separate thread so that you know you can also do things with the interface so here's the code I pasted it to this header file here and then I'm gonna go to globals and if I go to globals notice I'm including MFC sleep right here before I use it and then once I'm done I can just call xsleep and uh, I have a combat loop here where I'm making use of it and also an, an attack method so we'll take a quick look at that alright so basically what happens is the player is walking around or they're navigating through the game and that access is through up once they build their object and they get down here and um, switchboard is taking an enumerated constant right here and based on the value of a global location which tracks the player it sends them to the right location. Okay, so we'll take a look at fight scene one. And in this example, I'm calling X Sleep. And it's in milliseconds, so that's three seconds or 3,000 milliseconds. And then I'm going to build a new enemy after they've read this. Set the name and the life on the enemy. And then I'm going to pass them in. And both of these are pointers to objects instantiated on the heap. So I'm going to pass it into a combat loop. And the combat loop will then also make use of X sleep, just kind of pausing between output messages here. Um, I'm also using a function here, play that funk, which is just using MCI commands to play sound files during the fight scene. Okay, so I just wrote a function that takes two arguments, two C strings. And so we'll stop the theme music and we'll start Mortal Kombat and we'll throw them into a loop and we'll loop it until either the player or the opponent is you know, has been wiped out until they're dead and their life is, is no longer greater than zero and then we're calling an attack method and if you look in the attack method here you scroll down inside my ADT class here there's display stats inventory in the attack method I take a pointer to an entity object which is sort of the base class ADT in my inheritance hierarchy for my classes so I take a pointer to an entity and this makes the function polymorphic because the player can use it to attack the opponent and the opponent can then turn around and use it to attack the player. So I go through, I'm converting, I'm displaying some information here and now I'm generating a random value and um, here's a random value here, in this case I'm assigning it to damage and that random value is max damage and max damage can be changed throughout the attack method and. Uh, Sorry, somebody just walked in and opened the door and now I lost my train of thought. Uh, Alright, so now we need to convert it and we're going to display it. We're building it up inside of the C string. Now here I have a Boolean, which is a data member right here, a private data member. And based on whether it's true or false, I'm going to call this function use weapon. So if it's the opponent using the polymorphic attack, he's not going to call use weapon. He'll have his own method and his own weapons. But if it's the player, as he's using the polymorphic attack method, then he's going to call use weapon. Okay? And what does use weapon do? Use weapon will just look at a checked radio button that they have, and I'll use the cheat so he'll have all the weapons and you can see how it works. And then it's going to play a sound effect and return a different point value for each weapon and their power ups that you would find throughout the game and simply add that to damage. Okay? Um, but again, if you look in the attack method, I'm also calling or utilizing X sleep. All right, from my MF sleep uh, header file. So let's see how this works. And again, you know, you need to do this. You need to kind of implement a, a little bit of multi-threading if you're going to use sleep with a graphical interface or an MFC program. It would not be syntactically wrong if you called the sleep method, but logically, it's probably not what you want. You probably don't want the interface locked up, um, you know, while the player or the user has to wait for you know sleep to finish counting. Instead, you can you know, launch it in a separate thread and just sleep a certain process while leaving the interface free. So we'll build the project and run it, and we can start, and we'll go into a combat loop here. Yeah. All right. All right, so I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to... And then Tilda, which is my little cheat there, big fat shooter. Come down here, go up here. Now I'm going to start the combat loop. Alright, so there's my three second pause with X sleep. Stops that song with the MCI command, it stops, starts uh, Mortal Kombat. 
Notice it's pausing and displaying you know, feedback in my C-Edit control. And then I can choose different weapons here. Alright. So there's the disruptor firing the disruptor, adding eight points. Alright, run the cheat there. I'm a big fat cheater. Let's go over here. There's the three second pause of X sleep. And then it uses the MCI command to stop the original and starts playing Mortal Kombat. Again, there's a two second pause, one second, and three second pauses. It's displaying info in the C edit control. I'm going to choose some of the weapons here now. See, you can see that it doesn't lock up the interface even though it's sleeping. And that's because it's in a separate thread or a threaded process. Alright, so I'm using the quantum pole to play that sound effect. I'm going to choose the bubble laser. And then here's Mortal Kombat 2. It's the bubble laser. And I could even use abilities if I wanted to, or if I wanted to use med kits, um, you know, to heal myself. I could do that, even though it's looping. So again, you know, if it weren't for X Sleep, I couldn't actually do that. I wouldn't. My whole interface would be locked up, and I wouldn't be able to click on things and interact with the game. Uh, what, until that, you know, X loop was done. X loop was done taking off, you know, however long it was counting. It's a very useful method from the MSDN website.